Hello there, everyone. So I'm going to be talking about why leaders who focus on the short term guarantee, absolutely guarantee long term pain of their team, themselves and their organization. I hope everyone's doing really, really well. I'm Daryl Black and I help transform corporate managers and business professionals, transform them in from you know, well-meaning managers doing the best they can with probably little or no formal training to transformational leaders where they're respected, they're valued, they're trusted. They're the type of leaders that others want to be. Now, before I get too far into this, uh, there are some announcements for sure. It has been a busy, busy, busy time, but First and foremost, our Leading Through Chaos Online Summit is going like gangbusters. So certainly take the time, it's free. So register at uh, at the URL, www.ddbsummit.com. Well, there's 12 speakers, uh, 12 being myself, and kind of the impetus for it was, as I record this, it's, it's COVID-19, but the content is related to any crisis. And obviously my colleagues have so much, so so much amazing knowledge that I want to bring to bear and they're experts they're true experts in leading during chaos and so I really want to to help people in the corporate world learn from from those individuals so by all accounts pretty awesome feedback and some surprises I think because as well we might get into here later um, there's kind of a preconceived notion that leaders are uh, are the ones that are bombastic they're leader centric they're insensitive they're calculating they're bold they're um, you know and, and there's actually a lot of studies around psychopathy so you know there has to be a certain level of psychosis in CEOs and leaders and I'm certainly not going to get into uh, you know, deep dive into what that looks like. But I can tell you that the CEOs and leaders that I know and that I work with, um, the effective ones are not psychotic in the true definition of the term. I, I can say that they're very singular in their in their purpose, but how they go about fulfilling that purpose is completely different. And out of all 12 of the speakers, it's pretty resounding that the theme is putting the people first, taking care of the folks, supporting them. Whereas I think we've been raised in that kind of leader centric model with the leader up here but so anyways I would encourage you to uh, to sign up for the summit like I said it's free it's over four days you get instant access to it as well now also to the uh, we're really picking up steam on the lead from the inside out podcasts available Apple podcasts and uh, Spotify and Google I think so in there you know we've got solo uh it's a solo act primarily but i've been introducing some concepts or some speakers part ones of you know the aforementioned summit but also moving forward i kind of have uh, got the bug of doing interviews and so moving forward i'll be doing a lot more hopefully well i will be doing a lot more one-on-one -on -one interviews so i have uh, an individual that i'm talking to next week who is an absolute expert on leading from stage or presenting from stage and presenting material and information and also through electronic means and, and the purpose of that his name is Colin Boyd is to allow leaders especially in remote environments to project their charisma and project their leadership project their energy over the interweb essentially so there are some real uh, techniques and we'll also talk about the fact that public speaking is uh, the number one fear even before death or something like that. So we'll talk about some strategies and actual tactics to overcome that. And I'll be talking to, I've mentioned it before, um, uh, Eric Nolte from the Harvard National Leadership Preparedness Initiative. And uh, that's super exciting. And I've got another couple of folks lined up. Got bumped a little bit because I was just, as I record this week um, and late last week, I was up north responding to a pretty catastrophic flood in a community in northern uh, Alberta, my province. So uh, everything kind of got a little bit bumped because if anyone has ever done those types of events, you know that you're absolutely exhausted, long days, and, and it's not physical, even though I get a ton of steps in as per my, my you know, my super watch, it's mentally exhausting. Just 
every conversation you have is important and making notes and, and just going at that at that pace is uh, pretty tiring. So for me, I like to take a day or two off just to get my feet back under me and get the bags uh, out of my, uh, from underneath my eyes, which is always nice and everybody appreciates. So all that is to say, a couple of the guests that I was working on uh, for last week got bumped. So, but that's okay over the next little while. And we'll be getting a, a wide variety because I am really talking about the three pillars of my transformational leadership method. And that, one is self mastery. So, you know, the ability to control the inside. And then uh, the second one is what I call positive influence. So your ability to influence in a positive fashion, those around you. So that's pillar number two and pillar number three, which is going to be the focus of tonight or this, this recording is execution. And that is the act of executing on leadership. And the whole purpose of that particular pillar is to avoid analysis paralysis, to avoid overthinking. It's to avoid reading like crazy about a topic, whether it be leadership or anything and not actually doing anything. And it's about, you know, typically the model is we have all of this, you know, input and there's very little output, but I want to really make sure that we actually have the opposite. We have a little bit of input. So in the execution side, and then just massive, massive um, execution on the other side, but more on that uh, a little bit later. So that brings me to this topic. And that is why leaders who focus on the short term, absolutely guaranteed long term pain for themselves, for the team, for the organization, for the business, whatever that looks like from a leadership perspective. And I totally understand where this belief comes from. You know, the, the, the belief that leaders have to focus on the immediacy of the situation, because maybe you're hemorrhaging revenue. Maybe you have a big PR issue. Maybe you're now blasting everyone home to work from home remotely, all, all of those things. So I totally understand it. And in fact, biologically we're wired. Our, our default setting is to focus on the short term because that invokes our stress uh, reaction, which is a survival mechanism. And it goes back to the cave person days where frankly, long-term thinking when I had a, uh, you know, confronted with a saber tooth tiger probably wasn't in the best interest of humanity. And I'm very glad that my cave ancestors focused on the short term, you know, where food was going to come from the immediate physical threat and all of those other things. So it's completely normal to focus on the short term. But, uh, you know, society has evolved. We, uh, we as leaders have to be very, very, very aware of where our focus is and uh, figuring out where it should be short term versus long term. And I remember when I first started in emergency response, for example, and teaching, one of the kind of tenets of response was always, you know, start planning for recovery or demobilization as quickly as you can. And when I was on the front lines, it made no sense to me. I'm like, dude, ain't no one got time for that. Like what? I'm just barely keeping the wheels on right now of my immediate task, let alone figuring out what will happen in an hour or two hours or four hours, whatever that looks like. And for the frontline person, whether it be the factory floor or, you know, a paramedic or, you know, the person answering phones, that perspective is 100% valid. Literally, what is the next call? What is the next activity? What is the next task? What do I need to do for the next hour or two? Completely normal and expected. And that is their focus. But as you uh, go through the ranks and, you know, as a leader, your perspective should change and start to be more broad. So you got kind of, it's kind of like a funnel, right? Uh, but up from the bottom up. So your focus is like this very, very narrow at the bottom, but your perspective and, and your awareness needs to start to grow so that it's less about the short term, you know, the pinch point on the front line. And it's more about what is that bigger picture looking like? So as I went through the ranks, quote unquote, you know, I, I really started to get it to the point now where over the last few years, in terms of emergency management and me taking that experience and applying it to corporate, I totally get it now. I totally get it. So last week I was up north and it was a flood event and uh, pretty significant. 13,000 people evacuated in a very short period of time. And I can tell you that if you don't have a plan longer term, then it is going to be extremely painful. And this is kind of my, my point here in that there's all sorts of problems that will start to come as a result of not doing the front end work or the front end planning. And here's the thing leaders like crisis, whether it be personal, professional COVID or tornado or downsizing or upsizing or recession, whatever it is, any kind of crisis will end. It will end. And our jobs as leaders is to 
first and foremost, bring that chaos that bring order to that initial chaos as quickly as we can, whatever that looks like. But as soon as that is almost done and, and settled, you have to move your perspective as a leader to long term recovery. You have to. That is your job. That is one of your primary tasks. And an analogy I like to use is um, like a headlights. So I was just actually talking to a gentleman, Mark Keeley from LinkedIn, an executive in, in Europe for LinkedIn something or other, senior executive LinkedIn. And um, we had a great conversation about this this exact topic. And, and the analogy I used there was the, the headlights, even though they drive on the wrong side of the road over there in Ireland where he is, no judgment, no judgment judgment-free zone here. But um, so, you know, you've got your, your low beams and your high beams. Well, when you're working the factory floor or your business analyst, you know, kind of on the front lines or your paramedic or whatever, you're, uh, you're just, you're looking on your low beams and that's, that's just fine. You're, you're, if you're focused too far ahead, you're going to miss the pothole that you're going to hit short term. But as a leader, you need to be having your high beams on as quickly as you possibly can, because anybody can lead when the road is straight. That's easy. No problem there. We can pat ourselves on the back all day long um, if we're driving a straightaway. But leadership, particularly in times of uncertainty, has a lot of bends in it. And the sooner that you can identify those bends and, and, you know, the potholes and the bumps in the road and all those things, the sooner you can figure those out and see them, the better off you're going to be. And so that is the whole point around the short term focus guarantees long term pain. So then ultimately, I guess, what are some tactics around that when we talk about execution? Well, one of the most important things you need to do is recognize that recovery will happen no matter what the uncertain times are, whether it be a recession, depression, a personal, professional, any kind of crisis or, or times of uncertainty that you experience, it will end. So if we use COVID-19, for example, which is the context or the timeline of which I'm recording this, but it's important to recognize that, you know, like, like it will end. And the analogy I use all the time is it's like being surprised it gets dark at night. Guess what? It gets dark at night, unless you're like super high in the Arctic, but be that as it may, nobody really lives up there, only a handful of folks. So no offense, but, uh, but yeah, it, it's, it never ceases to amaze me. And then recovery comes and people are, are back, back into crisis mode. We're in crisis to begin with. We kind of settle in a little bit and then we go back into crisis when we go to recover because we're not prepared for it. That's inexcusable as a leader. It's inexcusable. You have to be prepared for what the recovery looks like. That's your job. So you can leave the short term day to day, minute by minute decisions and, and tasks and all those other things to the experts that are best qualified to do that. And then turn your high beams on, start looking for the turns in the road. So that's the first thing is recognize that recovery will happen and you need to be prepared for it. So then what does that kind of look like? Well, there's different ways of approaching it, but essentially what you have to do is we have to do a gap analysis. So what that means, so for example, if we're all use an emergency management example, re-entry, right? So a bunch of people flood, a bunch of people have, uh, have left um, on short notice. So a crisis management team comes together and, and it's made up of all different people and they bring folks in like me from out of town, all that stuff. And, it, and it's created to solve a particular problem. So that team is in place. It's not utilizing the same business processes or functions within the organization or anything like that. It kind of comes in and creates its own. So whether you are talking about like an incident management team, which is a very specific kind of model, or you know, you've just been scrambling to put band-aids on processes, suffice to say, it doesn't look like it did prior to the crisis. So it, it's like spaghetti, all the stuff mixed in. So what you have to do is do a gap analysis. And what that means is, is what are we doing now? Like what, what is this thing doing? Whatever this is, hopefully you have something, some sort of structure set up. So what is it doing? What can it pass on? So what does it need to continue doing? So what tasks is it doing now that, that we need to continue on? And is this the thing that needs to do it? And what I, what I mean by that is sometimes during crisis, we bring in subject matter experts or technical specialists or something like that, that are brought in to, to handle the particular situation. Well, does that capability need to stay in here or can it get passed off to the business? And there's a whole process around the gap analysis and things like that. But really what you're doing is you're mapping, right? You're mapping what the chaos model was and you're mapping it to what business looks like. 
Now, if you're doing true leadership, this will not be done ad hoc and this will not be done in half an hour or a day. This is a process. And this is my whole point is we need to start thinking about recovery as soon as we can, because the recovery piece is where we actually learn lessons and we become even stronger. And that's ultimately our job as, as people even. It's not just to get back to where we were. Yeah, that's great. That's resiliency. But we want to be what's called anti-fragile, where we get to the point where we're stronger and we're way more robust. And the only way you can do that is by a deliberate planning, slow, methodical planning process, a gap analysis, to look at where it needs to go. So within that is, again, the capability, the capacity, right? So sometimes this model here, whatever it is, maybe it's got a lot of capacity because you've brought in a bunch of capacity to help you, or maybe it doesn't have any, any capacity and you need to grow it here, that's fine. So you look at the, the capabilities, you look at the capacity, you look at really is something needed or isn't it? This is a, both, this is a danger and opportunity and I completely understand that businesses will see this as, a, as an opportunity to lean out and by leaning out that means unfortunately, potentially, uh, you know, implications for, for human resources and I totally understand that. But this is an opportunity for you to, to create a better business. It really, really is a better organization, a better team. You can become a better leader. But if you deprive yourself of that time, if you're doing it ad hoc, you're doing it at the last minute, you will absolutely just be throwing this together. And guess what? You're putting your folks back into chaos. You will not know what capabilities you need. You won't know what capacity is required. You won't know any of those things. And you'll just be reacting. And you won't recover very quickly versus the slower, methodical, gap analysis and a mapping there. And for me, one of the things, a technique that I do is um, I actually, if I'm working with a municipality or, or an organization or something, and we've got this crisis management team built, um, I'll actually put it out on the, on the board, you know, on, on a whiteboard and I'll just write out, okay, what are we doing now? You write that out. Um, what, what does this group have to do? Uh, who's doing it? What are some next steps? And then mapping and a capacity. So in other words, we've got 10 people doing this. Well, we can probably get away with five people doing it in the business, or it's usually actually vice versa. So another example comes from the Southern part of our province where we had a, a crisis management team of, uh, it was, well, by the time we did this mapping exercise, it was down to like 128. I want to say or 132 people. So pretty significant response. Um, and we had to map it to 19 full-time positions within this particular organization. So you're taking this 130 plus or minus bunch of stuff going on. You have to map it to 19. So I'm not a mathematician, nor do I play one on TV, nor did I stay at a holiday Inn express last night, but that's those numbers don't jive. So one of the big aspects of it is you need to determine, okay, out of those 19, who's doing what, and then what does the capacity look like uh, for this 19 peak group of 19 to bring in extra help and things like that. But guess what? That's the leader. That's the leader who does it. Post-secondary institutions are a good example where guess what? You're going to have to figure out what re-entry looks like. Is it online learning? Is it a combination? Is it just a back in class looking at all those scenarios? So that is part of the leader's job is to be methodical, plan it, do a gap analysis, figure out the, the capacity capabilities, map it to the business, map it to your team, and then present that and present different options too. That's very, very important. But if we're not thinking there, we're gonna be in short term and then guess what, re-entry. What? Oh man, all hands on deck again. We're back in a crisis. You're gonna treat your people poorly. Everyone's gonna be super stressed. Everyone's gonna be angry and frustrated. And the other thing to kind of think about, and I use this a lot, is it's kind of like swimming, where if you're going to swim a, a lap of 25 meters, well, okay, so you get the uh, Olympic swimmer, you know, lots of experience, dives in, gets to the 25 meters in X amount of time, barely breathing hard, right? Super efficient, super strong, super experienced, uh, all of those things. Okay, and that's great. But then you've got like the amateurs, the, the short-term think thinkers, and um, you've got the short-term thinkers. So, you know, I'm a leader, I'm dealing with the short-term and, and I'm doing my job and I got my head down, my butt up and I'm helping people. I jump into the water and as I'm swimming, I'm not very efficient because I'm an amateur and I'm all over, I'm bouncing off the sides of the pool. My goggles are off, you know, all of that stuff. And I'm absolutely exhausted. I'm changing strokes and just trying to tread water. And I'll eventually, hopefully get to the 25 meter 
you know, end of that. And there's going to be two contrasting styles there. One is going to be of that professional, efficient, methodical leader is going to be have lots of lots of gas left in the tank. And then there's going to be me, let's say, as the amateur hour guy, still get to the 25 meters, but completely exhausted, uh, lost all my gear, have probably been kicking my teammates and peers in the head as I'm trying to swim, maybe drowning some of them, whatever that looks like. So we'll still get to the 25 meters. Yay, we're all happy. But how we get there is a big difference. And how we get there is around leadership. So keep that in mind. Short-term thinking, it's natural, but as quickly as you can, start thinking about recovery, be methodical with it, do that gap analysis. And I get, you know, and if, if you don't, as I said, you're, you're just going to be putting your folks back into crisis of which we just went through in the case of COVID, you know, it's like renovations, like, man, oh man, that, that really sucked. It's, that's hard. It's hard. And then, so, okay, we did renovations. Now it's really good. And then, oh man, let's, uh, let's renovate again. Yeah, and, and Cecil, you're 100% correct. It, it's, it's about the journey, right? And as leaders, you got to be looking out at what that what that is. And from a, you know, kind of a personal perspective as leaders, one of our main jobs too is to take care of our people and create psychological safety. But if we're not planning ahead and we're constantly reacting, man, oh man, putting people in so much stress, so much stress, and you don't need to. Just put your head up and focus on the future. So hopefully that was somewhat helpful anyways. And I think it's important again, as we realize that all crises end, they all end. And as leaders, just to summarize, we need to bring order to that chaos as quickly as we can short term, but then as soon as we can, and even before it's totally settled, we have to start focusing on the long term and start start thinking about recovery, which sounds so counterintuitive, but I promise you that as a leader, if you are planning ahead, you're doing the gap analysis, you're being proactive, you will come out of the crisis far, far better, both organizationally and personally and, and all of those financially than you would if you're not. So hopefully that, uh, that helps. All right, folks, thank you everyone and uh, happy COVIDing, I guess. All right, bye.